This time on Jairus of All, I remind you that I am not a medical professional, and all of the information that I provide is from the internet, which is arguably an unreliable source. There's a lot of craziness, so I decided to build a biological isolation suit. First, I'm gonna build a box, and I'm gonna use this thin plexiglass to make that box because I want it clear, because it'll make it look cool later. If you try to cut plexiglass like you would cut most other stuff, it's difficult, but it's it, if you cut it like glass, where you just score it and then bend it, it's pretty easy. This is easier because it's so epically thin. I had this idea a couple weeks ago because I had to go to the store to get a couple things. And while I was there, I saw people wearing those filter mask things. So I decided to look them up to see how much protection they actually provide. And I found out there's three different grades of filter media. There's N, R, and P, non-oil resistant, oil resistant, and oil proof P. And then within those three different types of filter, there are three different grades. There's 95, 98 or 99, and then 100. So if you get a P100, it's oil proof, and it's 99.9 .9 or higher uh, particulate filtering. The filters that I use on my respirator are NIOSH P100 approved, right? A lot of those masks that people wear are N95, so it's the lowest rated possible. These are the highest rated possible. Point is, the filtration on these is incredible. That being said, I figured I would see if I can build something that is super protective. At least seems like it would be super protective. People have said that because I have facial hair, my respirator doesn't really do much of anything. Well, it seals way better even with facial hair than you get from one of those filters that just has the loops that go around your ears. They offer some protection, but not enough, since most of them are N95 and mine are P100. But after I started thinking about this, I figured I might as well make myself something that is super protective, or at least try to make something that's funny that's super protective, which is where this box comes into play, because those filters can't stop everything, even if they're P100. I had some scrap vinyl and I cut out this. Doesn't really make sense, but you wouldn't have a biohazard symbol on something that makes stuff clean, would you? I don't know, maybe. So the filters that I have work, but not entirely. So that's why I'm making this, which is gonna be a light box, a UV light box. If you spray plexiglass, with metallic silver and you do it in nice light coats. Whenever you flip it over, it looks like it's a mirror on the other side. And now they're nice and reflective on what will be the inside, but to make them seal the light in, this is the opposite of the technique that you use. Normally you put down a layer of gloss black and then you put metallic on top of it to make it look really good. In this case, I'm gonna put the black on top of the silver because the silver is on the inside and the plastic that I'm painting is transparent. Get it? Backwards. They're black now. I can put them together before I do. I wanna take my little symbol off. How cool is that? In order for the light that's inside the box to diffuse, I'm gonna lightly sand with some kind of high grit 320. I guess it's not that high grit. That way the light diffuses out through it a little bit better. Probably should have done this on the other side, but I didn't. So I'm doing this side. I'm using aluminum tape because I think it looks cool. Oh no. I almost took a Patreon name off. Speaking of Patreon names, it is a dollar a month. You get access to extra content. I send you the files from builds that I do and you get your name on the table. The next build is gonna be quite, well, the next build has already been quite expensive and all of the money from Patreon went to the stuff and then some. Basically, these people here are allowing the next build to happen. There's no way I could have done it without them. So yeah, if you wanna help out too, link in the description. I would just lay these down and tape them together, but they're not sharp edges, so it would try to pry the tape apart, so I need to have them separated slightly. Last one, before I do the top and bottom. That one, I, I made those too close. Come on, line up. There, there's the walls. Now I just gotta put the top and bottom on. We'll do the bottom first, because I wanna shine the light in the top, that way you can see what it looks like, because I'm impatient and I don't wanna wait till it's done and there's a hole in it for the light. I think this is the bottom. I think that's right side up for that symbol. It doesn't matter. This is not a normal flashlight. It is a cat pee finder flashlight. It's UVA, I believe. There's A, B, and C. 
This is the kind that makes blacklight stuff glow. This is going to shine into the box just like that. This plexiglass came from cheap poster frames and it is very thin and flimsy. So after some testing, I have determined that it needs at least some reasonable amount of reinforcement. So hot glue it is because hot glue sticks like crazy to plexiglass and it'll help seal all the seams. It is making the box a little wonky though. <laughs> Now I feel comfortable making holes. In my testing, I use step bits. Usually work for this sort of thing, but in this case, step bits don't work because, well, the only step bits that I have that are big enough to make the holes for all these pieces that I need to put on have two flutes in them instead of one, and it makes the plastic crack. I'm using a heated knife. It's hard to cut circles in plexiglass no matter what. This is the only thing that I could find that keeps me from cracking it. This is time consuming, but it works. So slow, but it's faster than breaking the box, so I can't really complain. Yay, perfect. This one wasn't, it cracked. I'll have to seal that up with hot glue. I had these PVC connectors laying around for a long time and I considered throwing them away, but I'm glad I saved these because they fit my filters. They're actually the same threads. Now it's a four port UV sterilizer box. Put these fittings in. This is getting exciting. I don't know if I should try to get hot glue on both edges. I think I might try. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Gotta hurry before it cools off. Come on, go together. Don't quit being a jerk. You're just so gooey. Okay, that was a pain in the butt and it did not work out very well. I think I'm gonna cut this off. Do it again. Round two. Now I'm gonna do it one seam at a time. Probably should have done the back side first. Use it as practice since that's the one that you won't see. Oh well. No, no. The heat of the glue is warping the side. Solution. Yes. I couldn't push on it because it was so soft from the heat. I was about to be screwed. Definitely sealed. I, I can't get the glue on the wall because if this one warps, there's no hole to. Yeah, anyway, here we go. I'll stick it quick. Haha. <laughs> All right. Little beams of UV light coming out of the bottom. Let's see if it's airtight. Did I succeed? It'd be cool if I did. I can hear a leak somewhere. Is that it? Realistically, this doesn't matter because it's it's for a joke. Man, I just can't start. I gotta make it work. I gotta make it, it's just gonna be so much cooler. I have soapy water. I can't see it. There it is. It's this corner right here. I found you. Now I don't hear anything. So it is airtight. Happy about that. But why did I put these screw out and why did I put those open end out? Well, I'll tell you what, these weird pieces not only were lucky enough to have a screw connection that matches the threads on these filters, but this hose that I had for something fits very snugly into this size PVC connector. How lucky is that? I just gotta trim some of this off because that's way too long. Oh, and uh, obviously just threading these things on doesn't seal them because when you thread them on to the respirator, there's a rubber gasket that this lip right there, get out of here pinches down onto. So I cut out some EVA foam circles fit right on here and it's closed cell foam. So it's sufficient to create uh, airtight seal. That pinches the whole way down onto the flat part and probably seals the threads too. And one piece wasn't thick enough. So there's another piece which is much thinner and I can push that on. Now my filters are sealed. Hot diggity dog. Hot diggity dog. Filter number two. That is sealed tight. To connect the tubes to the respirator that I have, I found that a good way to do it, this gets me close. These are little rings of PVC. I don't know what size they are, inch maybe. They're pretty close on the threads, but they're not close at all to the tubes. So I cut a connector in half. So if I take these small pieces of PVC and squish them down into the connector, then I have a piece that fits that the hose can connect into. I'm gonna put a little bit of this, what is this? It's handle wrap foam, put this around the threads. That way that sits nice and snug. Hot glue around the outside of this. That's how I'm gonna do the connection. 
This is open cell foam, but it doesn't matter because the seal is on the outside. But that snug fit will still help if there was a leak on the outside. This face plate is polycarbonate, not acrylic. So I'm hoping the hot glue doesn't stick to that as well as it does to plexiglass. Doesn't matter either way, I'm leaving a gap that way I can cut this off in the future. That way I can actually use this respirator for more than just a joke. Once the hot glue cools off, I can do the suit. This is a Tyvek painter suit by DuPont. Tyvek by DuPont is what they make bio suits out of protection suits, whatever they are. You might assume that this is the same thing, but it's probably not because it's Tyvek 400 and it says right on it, breathable. So probably not the same thing these for bio suits, but it's what I've got. The suit has a hood and boots built in, but it doesn't have gloves. So I had these cleaning gloves from Walmart. I think they're latex, I'm not sure. Anyway, they're nice and thick. They'll be good. I need to connect them to the suit, but I still gotta fit my hands through. So I have a solution for that. This is the same mixing cup that I used uh, to get the sizing for the Kratos chains for the Blades of Chaos. So I know my hand fits through it. That expands the bungee portion. I need to make sure it's the right side of the suit. Left, left hand. And now with the glove on that side of the cup, more hot glue. Oh no, it touched the cup. I need to be able to get the cup out of it. Whoa. The glue's so hot, it's melting the Tyvek. That's not good. Oh yeah, it's literally melting right through the Tyvek. It was a good idea, but it isn't working. I'll just have to cut the cup out from the inside. On second thought, it's gonna be way too much of a pain in the butt to be able to cut that cup out without cutting through the glove from the inside. I'm just gonna cut it off and then I'll hot glue the glove to the glove. Piece of chunk. And then I will cut the cup in advance for the other side. Could have just set the hot glue gun on low. Should have thought about that earlier. <laughs> what kind of project would this be if I didn't use duct tape? Just in case my hot glue seal isn't complete around the gloves, we'll put an extra layer of ultra protection with duct tape. Now it's time to tie it all together, but I need a strap to hang this. That's pretty good. I'll attach this to my UV box, that way I can just hang it around my neck. Speaking of UV, the flashlight that I have in here is UVA. UVA, B, and C are different wavelengths, and the different wavelengths determine what effects they have on stuff. When you get up into the other ones, that's when the light has such high energy that it obliterates the DNA inside your cells, or cells that are exposed to it in general. Sunburn, that kind of thing. Because of that, it also destroys any single-celled organism's DNA, and potentially kills it or renders it useless. Having a filtration system that is NIOSH P100 rated and then treated with UV light would net you air that is perfectly clean. Problem is, if you do that, then you have ozone in the air, which is not good for you to breathe. Mine is UVA and it doesn't really do anything. UV lights that actually produce the UV spectrum that will destroy cells are very expensive and I couldn't go anywhere to get them. And it would have taken a really long time to get them shipped here because everything that's going on. Cat pee flashlight it is. There we go, backpack system. Now all I gotta do is put this all on and this needs to be sealed to the suit. More duct tape. Here we go. <laughs> oh, got my hair. Almost there. Almost there. Stay on target. Stay on target. Can't figure it out. Got it. Oh, that one was way easier. Oh. So apparently hot glue doesn't stick to polycarbonate whatsoever. It's a lot easier when you can see what you're doing. I'll tell you what does stick to polycarbonate though. Super glue, very liberal application, fixed it right up. I think it's on. I need to go look in a mirror because I'm gonna add another layer of protection. More duct tape. I'm all duct taped. Super sealed up, ultra isolated. <laughs> Activate UV sanitation box. I can't go out and test this thing. I'm not trying to cause extra problems, but I can test it here with a garden hose. Okay, contamination resistance test one, go. Okay, okay. 
Contamination test complete. I can't feel anything. We'll have to go back inside to see if I got contaminated. There's a problem with biosuits like this. Even if you're protected when you go out into the world, you still have the contamination on you when you get back. So you have to get decontaminated. We know from movies that as long as you get blasted with some cloud, when you're in a decontamination chamber, it decontaminates everything, and then you can take the suit off and you don't have to worry about it. I can get decontaminated right here in my garage with a CO2 fire extinguisher. Decontamination sequence, commence! <laughs> oh. Obviously, decontaminating with CO2 doesn't do absolutely anything at all. And the suit probably doesn't do really anything at all either. The goggles do nothing. It was a fun little project. Tell you what it will do. You go out in public in something like this, people probably aren't going to get near you. Stay safe and isolated out there. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to subscribe, turn on notifications, because next week I'm starting a real buster of a build. Thanks for watching. Little secret. I forgot to tape the zipper seam. My isolation suit didn't work that well because it leaked right there. Other than that though, totally dry.